Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thanks very much for watching that EWAX removal compilation video today. I apologize for my voice, I'm coming down with the same cold. Oh, everyone's been asking how Mr. Taylor Green is. He's doing really well, he's actually back to work. Uh, I think we're gonna to be together for a voiceover tomorrow, I think, uh, not tomorrow, uh, Friday's video. So you should have Taylor back for Friday. Um, so we can see in this particular ear canal, we've got a very, very deep, uh, piece of wax here is sitting right on top of the eardrum as well. It's really compressed down in that area. Now, what's going to happen when it's very, very deep, when it's right down in this osseous portion of the ear canal, it's been pushed down there. So a patient's probably been using some cotton buds, Q-tips, something like that, just to push this down. But we're getting a really good grip here. Standard size on the tube coming out as well. There we go. Out that's coming. Let's get a, it's a nice big chunk of wax that one's right down on top of the eardrum. Let's take a little look beyond. It still looks a little bit messy in here, so there's still quite a bit of debris uh, deeper in that canal. A little bit of dry skin, a little bit of keratin there coming up off the bottom of the ear canal wall there as well. And you can see it's kind of interspersed into this plug. So we're just giving this a bit of a pull, but it had that layer of keratin. It's almost like a keratin ribbon running all the way through uh, that wax. Guys, we've got some quite interesting ones in uh, this particular compilation today. There's a little bit of middle ear effusion a bit later on. Um, we've also got... There you go, just tidying up now. We've also got a grommet extraction as well, which is really interesting, which ties in really nicely with middle ear effusion. So make sure you stay tuned for the last couple of patients in this compilation as well. I'm just tidying up around the outside edges, uh, just in this anterior canal wall here. Don't forget when we talk about anterior, posterior, anterior means uh, towards the front of your head, posterior, the back of your head. Um, so we're talking about anterior also closest to the face here. Uh, just removing these little bits and pieces. There we go. Oh, this is starting to come. Uh, just a little bit that was just down into that interior recess there. Just a little bit of tidying up around the outside edges as well. Now this has got really messy just because the patient has put uh, some softening drops in here. It's gone right down onto the eardrum as well. You can see this keratin layer we're just peeling away here as well. Look how that is coming off the top of the tympanic membrane there, just running down over the pars flaccida. Look how that has come away off that canal wall. So we had this bit of sort of keratin, this old skin that was hanging around on the actual eardrum itself. Um, so it's uh, just managed to pull that away. Got a couple of looser, softer bits just around the outside edge here. So my advice to this patient, it's always the same when you come across any of the Q-tips, stop using them uh, and that will stop pushing our wax further down. So what you will find is you know, with bath showers, just general cleanliness. You know, you inadvertently get some water in your ears. Most people, it doesn't cause any problems at all. Uh, you know, there are some people who do suffer with ear infections when their ears get wet. So you always ask the patient before, and you know, do you suffer with ear infections? Do you have problems with your ears normally? And that way, then you can judge whether you know you can say well, it's okay to get those ears wet, or whether you want to keep them as dry as you possibly can. So we're just peeling away all of this old dead skin. There's all this keratin material here. Uh, we have got some tympanic sclerosis as well, and we'll go through a little bit of explanation of that later on. That comes up in one of the videos later, so make sure you stay tuned for that one as well. Uh, I better just wish everyone a very happy Valentine's Day as well. It's Valentine's Day today. Uh, it's been lovely, actually. I've had lots of people requesting sort of Valentine's messages for partners on uh, Cameo from us as well, uh, which is really lovely, so that's always nice to see. Lots of love in the air today, guys. Um, so we've got this... Oh, look at that. We've got a very, very deep plug here. Uh, I think this, this is a second patient, sorry, in the compilation. I should have said that before we started. The other one, everything got sucked inside the suction tube. So I know you guys don't like tank shots, so I left it alone. So a nice, simple one. This one, we've got a very, very deep piece of wax. That's, sorry, guys, my video paused, but we've got this very, very deep piece of wax here. It's sitting right up against the eardrum. It's been pushed down in place with a Q-tip again, this one. Uh, lots of olive oil in here, especially when you get these deeper, drier plugs of wax that are right on top of the tympanic membrane. You want to be really oiling those up. You don't want any sort of pulling again against the membrane as all well, if you can help it. So out this comes, it was nestled right down into that anterior recess, which is the recess that's just there to the left-hand side of the screen, a little kind of dip just in front of the eardrum. Tiny little piece, but it was resting right on top of the drum. So don't forget, when we talk about your tympanic membrane, we're talking about the size of the tip of your little finger most of the time, thereabouts, just for your little reference as to how, how, uh, how small that is. So we've got, I'm gonna go with, oh my goodness, two sixteenths, I think, on that one, which I think is about half a centimeter or just under. So we've got a very different consistency. So you've had a very soft wax, you've had this 
very hard, wax was deep against the drum. Uh, now this is a kind of a, a little bit more of a stickier type of wax you'll see here. Uh, so what we've got in this one is the standard size ulna tube, not a massive entrance to the canal here, uh, but just enough to get the standard size ulna tube in here. So we're just going to start peeling this off the canal wall first of all. Now we can see we're right on the outside edge of the ear canal. So in that cartilaginous portion just inside the ear canal entrance, which is why you can see those little tiny hairs just popping in front of the screen there. Uh, because when we're using tools like uh, um, you know, suction tools and things like that, cubitage tools, your endoscope is dropped back a little bit away from the tool to give you some room. So just minimize any risk of chop sticking, which is where uh, the tool you're using flicks over the top of the, the endoscope. So to minimize that, you always drop your endoscope back a little bit further so you can get in a little bit more comfortably. So just lifting off the base of the canal here, just trying to unstick this plug. I've got it moving. I can see the bottom is, is, is dislodged, but this top, I think it's this top right section that's just holding everything in. So I'm trying to wiggle it and circle it around here just to try and loosen this up a little bit. Not quite there yet. So we're gonna bring the Jobson horn in at this point. Let's see if we can drop over the top of this plug here. You saw then, as I put a little bit of pressure on it, how the plug dropped further back into the canal. So we've gotta be careful that we don't inadvertently push this further back by trying to get the Jobson horn over the top. So to counteract that, what I've done is made a little ledge in the top of the wax, just so we can get a, good, a bit of a grip to pull this forward. And then we can just slide along that ledge. You can see how that peeled, almost unfolded the wax there, but it means we've got it most of it to the outer portion of the ear canal. So we're just gonna get behind it now with the Jobson horn, and we're just gonna bring this forwards. There we go, out comes that plug. You can see it was quite quite a chunky plug, that one. It was quite a solid piece. We do pick it up with the suction in a second just so you guys can see uh, the size. I think I had a bit of difficulty getting the um, Jobson horn into it. It didn't want to pick up. Is it going to pick? No, you can see it's just doesn't, you can see just how tough that is. Once you start getting into it, it's slipping and sliding in the bowl of the ear canal. So let's lift this up now with the, <laughs> it still doesn't want to come up with the suction. There you go. You can really see that plug there, just how solid that plug was. So. Uh, just going back in now to take another look. There's a couple of little pieces. The little brown spot you can see just in that posterior section here, so the posterior superior, so the back and top most portion of the eardrum there. Uh, that little section there is just a bit of discolored oil. It's not wax itself, so we're going to leave that there. Uh, but it looks lovely and healthy. Good light reflex on that eardrum. So this is the plug removal. So one centimetre. Uh, that is five... Is that five eighths? Yeah, f oh God, I can't tell. Five eighths, I think that was. No, it's three eighths. Sorry, guys, three eighths of an inch. There we go. Uh, let's put my glasses back up so I can see it. Uh, so this, I think, this is our first, second, third. This is the fourth patient, I think, in this compilation video. So you can see a very narrow entrance to this particular canal as well, but a much softer type of earwax here. As soon as we're putting the suction tube on, you can really see it all just almost imploding into that suction tube as we're moving. So what we're doing is constantly moving very slowly, moving that suction tube forwards, just so we maintain the suction and contact with the wax. And then everything's going to start getting sucked inside that, uh, that tube then. There you go. You can see that consistency there. It's a very thick gloopy kind of consistency of wax this one so just trying a different tact here trying a different portion of the canal same kind of thing you can just see everything getting sucked inside that machine there the difficulty with this particular type of uh, consistency of wax is it does tend to, to line the inside of the uh, zona tube so you, you, it kind of restricts the airflow a little bit so you have to keep flushing this on a regular basis uh, i know some of the other audiologists on youtube uh, talk about you know putting a little bit of olive oil up there um yeah that works sometimes but i find it's not particularly effective all the time i think you do tend if especially very mushy types of wax like this that it just sticks so quickly on the inside of the tube. Um, all the tubes do come with little pipe cleaners. So every single one you get, you get a little cleaner, you can push through it just one block it. And you tend to do that a little bit more regularly with these types of waxes. So we've got a grip now. We've got the harder kind of nugget uh, of wax, which was at the core of this plug. That's now at the entrance of the canal. A little bit too big. It won't quite fit out to the ear canal here. Um, so we're gonna have to give this a little bit of a wiggle, break this down uh, just inside uh, the entrance to the canal here. So just make this a little bit smaller. There we go, it's on its way. You can just see this plug, we're having to break this down at the entrance to the canal. We've got that grip on that hardened nugget of wax that you can see coming away there. Uh, lovely plug, 
let's take a look beyond it. There's a couple of little straggly pieces. We need to do a bit of tidying up. Now we talk about middle ear effusion. Now see that yellow patch you can see on the eardrum, it just points out to you there. That is called middle ear effusion. So what is middle ear effusion? If you've ever had a heavy cold uh, or any kind of sinus issue, what you're more likely to get is fluid or sinus fluid kind of build up behind the eardrum. So don't forget at the back of the eardrum, the last layer in the middle ear space, it's surrounded by this mucosal layer. So it's constantly producing mucus, uh, which is then just draining down through your station tube to stop any bacteria from taking hold. Now, if you're really congested, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be producing a lot more of that mucus and then you can get this uh, sort of it overwhelms the drainage system in the middle uh, middle part of the ear. And what happens then is you get this fluid buildup, which is known as middle ear effusion. Uh, so the patient will be experiencing some dullness to their hearing because if you've got fluid behind the eardrum, the eardrum can't vibrate as well as it should. Uh, and most of the time that will resolve itself anything from sort of nine to 12 weeks thereabouts. If you do nothing about it at all, it will just drain away on its own. As you produce less mucus, then uh, the middle ear space can then start clearing the backlog through the eustachian tube. And if it goes on for a long period of time, and especially in younger children, they're really, really prone to these kind of problems because the eustachian tube isn't sitting at its, at its kind of normal angle. It's a little bit flatter, so much harder to drain that fluid away. Um, you can sometimes have something called a grommet fitted. So that's what's going to come up in the video next. So make sure you stay tuned for that. You'll see exactly where we talk about a grommet. That's why I put these two videos back to back because it was easier to show you, you know, this is, this is mid-ear effusion and then this is the sort of thing they can put in to try and help that out. So what we've got here is a bit of a thicker plug on this side. We're going to just remove this. Now that you can see that thick, thick plug just disappear in there. Let's tidy up this entrance a little bit. This is more sort of cosmetic wax here. It's not gonna cause any problems with the general day-to-day -day hearing. This is more just because you can see it from the outside edge. Not so much middle ear fluid there, but it does look a little bit retracted. We can see that light reflex we talk about there is just a little bit more kind of dispersed. Um, so we've got two centimeters, three quarters of an inch on that one. So. Last video on the compilation coming out. Now I'll give you a bit of a backstory to this one. Lovely young man, uh, basically suffered with glue ear, which is where middle ear effusion, which is if that fluid stays in there for a long period of time, the, the fluid starts to become thick and sticky. So it's uh, called glue ear, basically, uh, or chronic otitis media with effusion, which is what this is. So what you can see here is uh, that little white plastic uh, sort of object you can see in there is actually something called a grommet. So a grommet is a way of treating middle ear effusion. What you do is you make a little incision into the eardrum and you have surgically in, implanted then you have this uh, little plastic tube that you put in through the ear which allows air through the middle ear space, uh, through the eardrum into the middle ear space. Helps with fluid drainage if you like. You'll get a good idea of it now. It's basically it's got two flared ends. Imagine a little cotton reel two flared ends and you've got this narrow section in the middle. So it's that narrow section that's actually pushed, uh, sitting in the center of the eardrum. They will normally fall out on their own as the eardrum repairs itself. Uh, this uh, young man had this fitted eight years ago. So uh, it's never fallen out since then. It's actually been in the canal, but it's actually come out the eardrum. Now, an interesting fact about having grommet insertion is people who have grommets inserted are between about 15 to 30% more likely to get something called tympanosclerosis. Uh, now, tympanosclerosis is a, is a kind of buildup of calcified deposit in the eardrum itself. So if we take a look at this, there's the grommet. You can get a really good view of it there as this is coming away. But have a look at the eardrum beyond once we've got this last little bit of wax away. You'll see there's a lot of tympanosclerosis. Really, really common. Uh, it can happen with age. You know, it's part of the aging process. No one really knows why it happens as such, but you are far more likely. You can see these white patches, two little hands will come up. There you go. That's tympanosclerosis. That is really common for children who've had grommets or adults who've had grommets when they were younger. Um, if it's just uh, affecting the uterus, it's moringa sclerosis. Uh, that's what that's called. And then if it affects the sort of, you can affect the, the middle ear space and the ossicles as well, less so the mastoid uh, bone, but it can affect those parts as well. But that's more unusual. It's usually just the eardrum itself. Well, there you are, guys. Quite an interesting one to finish off there at the end. So three eighths of an inch. Um, well, I'm going to go with just under a centimeter. You can see that little grommet there on that zero line. That's how small it was as well. Uh, but um, yeah, well, thanks again for watching the video today. Uh, fingers crossed, I'll have poked up a little bit by Friday and Taylor will be 
back as well so you can do the majority of talking on Friday. And uh, as always, guys, take care of yourselves, take care of your ears, and take care of one another. Oh, sorry, guys, we do enjoy the videos. If you could like, heart, share, follow, subscribe for me, that would be fab. And if you do have ear problems yourself, don't forget to check the link tree out. You can book yourself an appointment, come and see myself or the lovely Mr. Taylor Green. We'll get that sorted out for you. Uh, but until Friday, I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.